All right, y'all. Um, let's see. Revive by your community guidelines. YouTube is clearly getting a little squirrely. I don't, uh, this is my third try making this video, and it keeps shutting me down and saying they're seeing copyright infringement, so I don't know what they thought they were seeing behind me in my kitchen that was infringing on anyone's copyrights. And I even turned my tank top around so that you couldn't see the logo on the back, which I'm not even going to tell you what it was, because now I'm all nervous. So... I <laughs> don't know what's going on here, YouTube. I'm just making a, a yarn spinning video. Um, so anyhow, take three on this. And if this doesn't work, I'm just going to record it. And I don't know what's going to happen. But I'm going to try to do this live. So, without further ado, in this third time's a job, in this unnamed pot with no brand name, <laughs> is what I used my drop spindle, which also has no brand name or copyright affiliation, just a regular, somebody made this, it's homemade. I like to, when I'm unwinding it, uh, put your drop spindle in the dish with no name and unwind it onto your hand to make two little balls if you're wanting to two-ply, which as you see, I uh, didn't divide my fiber evenly, so I'm gonna have to have one's going to be bigger than the other, but that's going to be okay. And like I said, I'm I'm now a little nervous about this, <laughs> so I'm going to try to get on get on going here. And I uh, don't know what's going on with with YouTube. So take your two little balls, and you're going to drop them in that same dish or shoe box, which is not affiliated with anyone. And um, <laughs> then just take your ends. And like I said, this is how I do it. So other people may do it differently. I just literally tie the ends together. And then you can take your drop spindle, and um, I just tie it onto the base. So you're going to tie your two ends together, and then you're going to tie it onto the base, like so. And don't tie it, you know, too crazy tight, because then you won't be able to get it off. And um, so you've got your two strands tied to your drop spindle, and the little tail's just going to hang in there. It's fine. So all you're going to do, and like I said, I've got my yarn in this pot um, or shoe box or whatever. And the purpose of that is just to keep them from, like, running all over the floor. And um, so anyhow, like I said, sorry, I'm a little flustered at this point in time. All you're going to do is if you, I always spin clockwise. So to two-ply, I'm going to go counterclockwise because you don't want to be unspinning. You'd really have to, like, you know, really go to town, I think. But... It's always best you want to go when you're two-plying on either a wheel or a spindle the opposite direction. So I'm just going to bring it up and put it around. And it, of course, uh, is going to look a little funny at first. So instead of going clockwise, I'm going to go counterclockwise. And you get your twist built up and see, look how pretty. And so that's a little, like two-plying on a drop spindle is really easy. There goes my oven. <laughs> uh, trying to make some sourdough. So I'm just going to keep spinning it counterclockwise, as you see here. In this hand, I'm just keeping it. Basically, you don't want them to get tangled up. So you just, I let it kind of run up over my hand, almost like I would with continental knitting, and just bring it over in this hand. So I'm spinning this way counterclockwise and just letting it run down to the floor. And then when you run out of arm length, which I do pretty easily because I am short, um, then you just wind it back on to your drop spindle like you would normally. So, do, 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 do. so that's what you do, and then you bring it up, and then you just repeat the process, but continue to make sure you're doing it counterclockwise or the opposite direction of whatever it is you're doing. Counterclockwise, and you may have to use, as y'all know, when I'm doing regular drop spindle courses, I usually say not to pay too much attention to keeping the spin going. But you've already spun the yarn at this point, and you do want to, the twist is what's giving you, you want to have a nice, even two ply, which this is so pretty. I'm very excited about it. So I am maybe paying a tad more attention to the twist on this, and I'm going to go ahead and end this video now that I think I've. Uh, mostly showing you what I wanted to before uh, YouTube gets sketchy on me again. But uh, for more information and without all of the flustered hubbub of this video, uh, two pine and chain pine on a drop spindle are covered in the drop spindle course that we have. <laughs> You're welcome, Cheryl. Um, 
so anywho, for a less weird video, there that is all part of the drops middle course. But anywho, I'm glad I got this made. So yeah, you're just gonna tie it together, tie it to the spindle. It's pretty straightforward. And then just you do like I said, just keeping your strands from getting tangled is the name of the game. And then keeping an even twist. So I'm just keeping an eye on this to make sure that like some parts aren't super twisty and other parts aren't super not twisty. And then keeping them in a little bowl or box will also greatly help with that. And then you just wind it on here and you end up with a bunch of pretty yarn. So yay, third time's a charm. I guess uh, maybe I had too much child artwork behind me uh, facing that way in the kitchen. So anyhow, <laughs> whatever YouTube. Anyhow, I will talk to y'all later. I'm going to go post this in our Facebook group because um, this was supposed to be the last video of our Tour de Fleece video spinning. And as you see, this is what I accomplished Tour de Fleece <laughs> for spinning. I had a lot of other uh, like business owner type stuff to do. And, you know, we just added on to the, uh, did a whole relaxation and mindfulness section that I just actually tacked on the front of our big spinning course. And I tacked the spindle course onto the big major spinning course so it's all like one big thing now you can still get the spindle course separately by itself but i wanted it to be i wanted to have more things on there for people that were like yarn lovers but they didn't know how to spin at all so it can take you from like a knitter or crocheter through spinning into spinning a wheel and like so we added some sections um different pamphlets we'd written or collected on um Fiber arts for mindfulness and relaxation, which as you can see I need because my brain doesn't work half the time. So that's what I was busy doing instead of spinning during <laughs> toward, uh, well maybe that's what I shouldn't say, during the spinning competition we just participated in. So anyhow, Aaron James, over now.